Welcome to Enlighten, everyone. So excited to be here with you where we talk about creative consecration through Christ. And today we're going to be talking about grace, God's grace. And this will be our um, piece of artwork that we're going to be talking about. And I cannot wait. I cannot wait for you guys. Um, it's going to be so much fun. I hope you're doing well wherever you may be in your part of the world. It is so, so wonderful to, to be here and to be with you on this beautiful, beautiful summer morning. And I, I, this is like talking about grace is like one of my, gosh, one of my favorite things to ponder is grace. And I have been so giddy and thinking about and praying and just pondering grace and because like I have all these amazing friends that talk about grace right and so learning from them has just been so amazing and the scriptures I was thinking I just keep asking people what is your um, favorite thing about grace what is grace to you right like I just keep telling people asking people that and and what is your favorite grace story, you know, in the scriptures? And so it is so, so much fun. And I can't, I can't wait for you to meet my friend who most of you obviously know him, darling Brad Wilcox. And um, he is one of the experts on grace. And so truly, it's, it's going to be so exciting to be talking about um, grace and um God's mercy and love for us. So let me see if I can grab him real quick. I tried it on Monday, so I hope you guys it works. And um, oh, yes. hello. <laughs> Hi, Ava. How are you? Wonderful, wonderful. What a beautiful day. Beautiful day. Good. So good to see you. <laughs> well, I'm so glad I connected because I'm not a pro at all this technology. Oh, you're amazing. Well, you are so, so wonderful. Before we go any farther, further, I need to show you what a fan I am of your work. This is my stairwell at home. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> Did you see all the paintings? You're amazing. Oh my gosh. That is so dear to me. Oh my oh, goodness. So, so, so dear. So dear to me. Oh. And your family is so dear to me. Thank oh you. My, oh my gosh. We love you. I was talking. We had some missionaries that came over last night. We have the missionaries over Tuesdays at Timothy's. Tuesday with the Timothy's. Every <laughs> Tuesday they come over. <laughs> And I was asking him about grace. He was like, oh, well, you need to listen. I asked him, what do you, what do you tell me about grace? He's like, oh, just listen to Brother Wilcox talk. Like, <laughs> That's no, <not> right? <laughs> they didn't know anything about us. They didn't know nothing. And it was so cute. He's like, oh, well, there's a great grace talk you should listen to. That's oh. so good. And, <laughs> and then, yeah, of course, a general conference talk. <laughs> well, I'm grateful and tell him that I'm glad that I get to go team teaching with him. When <laughs> Yes. yes yes oh my gosh you know i was thinking um uh, brad that it's been 13 years since you gave the grace talk i was just looking it up in july you gave it in july yeah and it was it, it was around uh yeah it was about the middle of july and it was yeah a while ago uh which seems crazy because it just seems like yesterday oh my gosh one of the most powerful seen over millions like million and a half people in the whole world that one of the most powerful messages ever given and i'm so grateful you you kind of get like it was like the essence of it and more in your general conference talk which we're going to talk about today so it was like Great. wow this is only getting better if that's even possible right <laughs> thank you just so amazing yes you have been such a dear friend to our family. We absolutely adore you. I, I think everyone needs a Brad Wilcox in their life. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, oh. And I'm so proud of him. 
your daughter's at FSY right now and your boys are out on, no, wait, uh, your one boy's in Denmark. Where's the other one? He's at BYU. Yeah, oh, he's he took, you. One, took one of your classes too. Oh, yeah. it's you, you just, your light and your energy and your excitement about the gospel is really contagious. It's like, I had goosebumps just listening to your general conference talk. I'm like, how many people can I share this with? Whether they're oh, members or not, you know? I'm like, how many, it was, there was joy being radiated just from your presence, let alone what you said. I mean, you just, you have this gift and ability to connect with people, which is so absolutely incredible that you, you bring God's light into people's lives. And I know London will testify of that as well, who is serving right now. And all of us, my whole family, we love, and everyone I talk to just adores you. So thank you so much for being here with us. I know I'm almost sure almost everyone in here knows you, but just in case, because we always have new friends joining us from all over the world, which is so awesome. Um, please tell us a little bit about yourself, Brad, and kind of introduce yourself so people, if they don't know you, they can get to know you a little bit more. Okay. Um, well, I grew up in Provo, Utah, uh, except for some childhood years that I spent in Ethiopia, Africa. And that definitely gave me a different perspective on the world because my earliest childhood memories are of Ethiopia. And then uh, moved back to Provo. My dad was a professor at BYU. So I grew up in Provo, then served a mission in Chile and uh, later had the opportunity to go back to that country as a mission president. And those were all such formative experiences for me. Uh, and I, I love being able to, uh, to learn and grow in those settings. And uh, I was serving as a bishop uh, before we were called on a mission. I was serving as a bishop in a student ward, a young single adult ward at BYU. And uh, you know, the kids would come and they'd confess and they'd feel better. And then they'd go out and mess up again. And then they'd come and confess and feel better. And then they'd go up and mess up again. And about three or four times through that cycle, I noticed that they would kind of quit. It, it wasn't that they would quit coming to church, but they just kind of quit uh, being intentional, passionate, all in. They just kind of started uh, stagnating. And I thought, you know, these young people know that Jesus Christ died for them. They know that because of his mercy, we can repent. And they know that through the atonement, they can be cleansed. But what they don't understand is grace. They don't understand the power that also flows from the atonement and that the atonement made possible. And this power that can help them through a change process, through a perfecting process, so that we don't have to spend our whole lives in this cycle of, you know, sin, repent, sin, repent, sin, repent, whatever gets us to the point where we don't want to keep sinning, whatever gets us to set that higher ground, it's grace, it's the power, the divine assistance the endowment of strength that God and Christ can give to us. And so that's when I decided I needed to start teaching more about not just how Jesus is there to forgive you, but how Jesus is there to help you make a transformation and to be changed through him. One of my scriptures that I love is in the Book of Mormon. It's on the very last page. And it's one that I'm having my students at BYU memorize right now. So try to say it from memory. <clears throat> it's uh, Moroni 10, 32 through 33. Yea, come unto Christ and be perfected in him and deny yourselves of all ungodliness and if ye shall deny yourselves of all ungodliness and love God with all your might, mind, and strength, then is his grace sufficient for you. Now, I want to stop there. A lot of Christians will read that scripture 
And then they say, see, you think you're earning grace. You have to love God with all your might, mind, and strength. You have to deny yourself of all ungodliness, and then you'll get grace. No, that's not what the scripture says, especially if you continue to read. Denying ourselves of all ungodliness is not something we do once to get grace, and then it's over. It's a lifelong process of putting off the natural man of becoming a saint through the atonement of Christ the Lord. And so it's this lifelong process. And as we love God, then he is willing. I mean, we have to invite him in. God is not going to override our agency. He's not going to force his grace on us. He's not going to force himself on us. But as we choose him, as we love him, then he is able, he's invited into our lives. And then he's able to share this unmerited, unearned gift with us. And when he does, then our lives are never the same. Listen to the rest of the scripture and then I'll take a breath. <laughs> oh, boy, I just came like a, a can of soda. I'll shake it up and now I just open the can and bang, it's all just coming out. But the rest of the scripture if you love god with all your might mind and strength then is his grace sufficient for you that by his grace you may be perfect in christ and if in christ with christ did you catch that and if by the grace of god you're perfect with christ in christ and deny not his power his grace then are ye sanctified that word means changed made better then are you sanctified uh through the grace of god uh, in the uh, through the shedding of the blood of christ his atonement which is in the covenant of the father unto the remission of your sins that ye become holy without spot being justified means that we can be declared clean that's what those young adults were feeling but being sanctified means that we can become holy we can become not just without spot cleansed but holy and when you think about it ava i mean the goal isn't just to be clean i mean god can cleanse us but that's only one of his attributes he wants to make us holy some girl wrote me an email and said, why not have sex with my boyfriend? Why not? We can always repent later. And I wrote her and I said, I'm so glad you know you can repent. I'm so glad you know you can be clean. I'm so glad you know you can repent as many times as you need to. But cleanliness is only one of God's attributes. And the time you're wasting with your boyfriend is time that you could be learning his other attributes like charity like selflessness like self-control the very attributes that the law of chastity can teach and the very attributes that are at the center of a strong marriage and an eternal family so yes ava there's more grace is not just about his willingness to cleanse us it's about more wow Oh my gosh, I so many golden nuggets. I was just like incredible, like the the truth about grace. And I feel like sometimes we don't talk enough. Like I seriously feel like we we can listen to your talk every once a month at least at church. I want to just sit up and read it all again and again. <laughs> I think it's so important what you're saying because so often, just like Damon in the story, yeah. you know, you have, I, I like almost underline everything you said because <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. But I love how you said that, you know, he was so used to, and I feel like we, we are used to thinking that of earning, you know, earning God's grace and like um, this um, journey of like constantly trying to prove ourselves right to God. And actually, I wanted to share a little bit about this piece that I was doing this and it, my thought was so deep in my heart. I really wanted to talk about receiving. I in life we're so much like what am i doing you know what and it's of course there's many wonderful things we need to be doing 
Um, but how about receiving his grace? And I really wanted to show um, how amazingly important it is because it's right there, you know? That's it's a process. It is that's really kind of the a process. And just thinking that it's available for us, that his grace, as we climb up the steps, right? I, I mean, we have to have the F. We have to, like you said, want him. But it was just so exciting to like say it is a process little by little step by step you know and then we can receive and then i thought of the word receive like receive the holy ghost um you're receiving god's will you're receiving forgiveness i mean the list goes on and on of that power of forgiveness and the power of receiving right receiving that and so when you shared that was so sweet when you talked about damon and the story that he just um instead of like thinking less of himself and beating himself up because he had messed up he was thinking about jesus more and what jesus has done for him and that to me is like like you said if we know god that will change everything because he stands at the door he knocks and he even speaks we know that scripture he's beckoning us to let him in our lives and then I love that. I love that story you shared that like we can call on that enabling power. And that's that's what this young man taught and and countless others that have heard this talk. And I I mean, I am I am a very simple, ordinary person and I don't know how to do it exactly right. But maybe you can share some ideas of how how do we act? What does that like look like on an everyday um life in our lives like i mean like how how do we prepare ourselves and especially in times when there's affliction because then we need them most you know yes. what, what what would you suggest or maybe some things to um yeah to to prepare our hearts and to hold on to him to that enabling power and let that love of christ fill us yeah i think that beautiful piece that you just showed that hangs in the young women uh council room so where the young women and the young men presidency counsel together every week that painting is hanging in that room i don't know if you knew that ava but it is beautiful that's also hanging on my wall because to me it's a perfect beautiful description of how we uh receive grace now any football player knows that receiving is an action word if he's a receiver he's not just standing there waiting for it to come he's running down the field he is checking moving around putting himself in position to receive so yes grace is a gift but it's a gift that must be received and i think that that's the important thing to remember is that we have to be the receiver and in your painting you you see her reaching up well how do we reach up to christ it's through covenants as we make a covenant then he is able to extend his hand to our extended hand and literally take us by the hand now think about it, Ava, when someone is baptized, the minute they're baptized, the minute they have made that covenant and entered that relationship with God, hands are extended to give the Holy Ghost. And so it's, uh, it's wow. beautiful wow. because that's those hands, the minute you extend your hands, then hands are extended. Now think about the temple think about what happens in the temple the minute we make covenants hands are extended wow. symbolizing the grace of god the grace of christ when we go through the veil of the temple a hand is extended no one goes through the veil all by himself the prophet himself can't part that veil and walk into the room that represents heaven he has to go hand in hand with the one representing the lord and it's hand in hand that we go that's a beautiful image of grace is these two hands clasped 
And as we think about that, you know, some Christians will say, oh, well, in your temple, it's all about secret handshakes. No, no, no. It's all about grace. It's all about not just going to heaven, but growing to heaven. And there is no way that we can grow to heaven without that heavenly help. Wow. That, you know, it made me think of immediately as you're talking about this, the two hands. I don't know, just the story of the, of the prodigal son, like this boy that was a rebel that just left everything, just forget, you know, his whole fortune. He took it, disgraced his dad and this whole village left, but comes to his senses. It doesn't feel worthy to come back he says that right he's like i'm not worthy but at least i'll be a servant and then what do we have the dad running against all norms like didn't care what society that was very disgraceful back then right but he's running and what does he do he's clasping his hands around him just like what you're saying. he's like hugging him he's like you're mine i love you no matter what you've done you can always come back and just that, I mean, he's, his process of repentance already started when he came to his mind, right? When he was thinking, oh, I'm going to go home. I know what, what, what is good. I know what is right. I know what is light. I'm going home. And just the idea of like hugging him, that family, father and Jesus, right? They want us so much. And out of that analogy of just what did the father do of that boy? He ran, ran, and then hugged them. It's just so dear to me that goes so much with what you just said. Like but the, 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 the father couldn't force himself on that no. boy. He oh. had died before, and he finally had to let him go. And the boy had to use his agency to turn to the father. But then the father was just right there. Sometimes people think of a covenant as a contract. And so then they say, well, I'm better off not getting baptized or I'm better off not going to the temple because I don't want to make promises that I won't be able to keep. They don't realize that in making those promises, they're inviting God into their lives. And when they invite God into their lives, he brings the power that they need to keep the promises. So the covenant is not a two-way contract. You do your part, I do my part. A, con it's a covenant is a relationship. It's the embrace of the father and the son. It's this covenant relationship. And in that relationship, then we are empowered, just as this son is empowered in his relationship. Not the contract, but the relationship that, 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 that the covenant represents. And that's how he receives grace. Now, you'll remember in the prodigal son, there's the other boy. And yeah. a, lot, a lot of people relate to the other kid. Oh, great. My brother screwed up. And then he came back and he gets everything. And I'm the one that's been faithful and I don't get anything. No, you've got to remember that the, if, if the brother had true charity, he would be as thrilled to see his brother as the father is to see him. But this underscores the need for us to grow to heaven. The, the younger brother is trying to earn heaven. Yes. He, he's trying to say, I'm going to do all these things right, and then you have to give this to me. See, that's contract thinking. That is transactional. And grace, the covenant that opens the door to grace, is transformational. And so the question isn't who, who, who did the, what the father asked. The question is who is becoming like the father. Mm. And they both have a ways to go. But the one is turned in the right direction, and the yes. other is not. And so it's a matter of who is becoming like the Father. That is the ultimate goal, and that is what grace is all about. 
Oh, I love that. I love so much. And it's interesting. I love in your talk, you say that um, you actually are quoting Richard J. Scott. I just, I love when all of your quotes are like jams, everything. <laughs> so many good, wonderful truths here. But I love when you quoted Richard G. Scott and you said, the Lord sees weaknesses differently than he does rebellion. The Lord speaks of weaknesses. It is always with mercy. And it made me think, do you think mercy could be that Hesed love, that covenantal love? Yeah. Um, could that be connected? Because you talked about covenant. Very much so. In Second Nephi 2, in the Book of Mormon, it says we need to rely on the merits the mercy and the grace of Jesus Christ. Now his merits mean he was the only one qualified to do the atonement. He was the only one capable of doing the atonement and he was the only one authorized to do the atonement. So yes, he's the only one that could have done it. The fact that he did it tells us that he loves us. Now his mercy means that he gives us this opportunity to repent. His mercy means he's always got his arms extended. He's always waiting for us. He's willing to come into that covenant with us. And so that mercy means that he loves us just the way we are. He loves us. He recognizes that we make mistakes. He recognizes that we sin. He recognizes that we're in a fallen world. He knows this is a mortal test. I mean, he loves us just the way we are. But his grace means he lo loves us enough to not leave us the way we are. Your daughter's at FSY right now, and uh, she is having a great experience. Um, but when the church started doing FSY, it used to be a program under BYU called EFY, and there was a dress standard attached. People knew they had to come dressed in certain ways and with hair groomed certain ways. Uh, President Uchtdorf, Elder Uchtdorf, said, no, we're going to have a different approach at FSY. We're going to say, come as you are, but don't expect to stay that way. Mm. So, yeah, I go to FSY registration and I see what the girls are not wearing. I see how short the shorts are on the boys. I see the crazy hair. I see the piercings. And I just think of the words that originally were said by Elder Holland, come as you are, but don't expect to stay that way. Doesn't that describe grace? Jesus and God are saying, come as you are. The, the father of the prodigal son is saying, come as you are. And then they're saying, don't expect to stay that way. Because the minute you come, then I can give this grace that is going to transform your heart, transform your nature, transform your desires. So come as you are, but don't expect to stay that way. Jesus loves us. He loves us as we are, but grace, he loves us enough to not leave us just the way we are. Oh my gosh. That is, that is such an important point because that, that it's, you don't just like get grace without doing anything too right you have to try to be more like him and i think that's i love that what helps us practice living like christ we couldn't do that on our own yep. every time we try we fail yep. but day by day step by step remember your ladder that you painted yes. Yes. <laughs> by step step by step who helped her get that far on the ladder was that her part and then now god needs to do his part no this was God helping her take those steps. God isn't waiting to help us. The minute we stretch out our arms, he's helping us. And he's helping us up that ladder. And it's a slow process. It's a lifelong process. But that sanctification, when we partake of the sacrament, we say, God, Jesus, I'm willing to stay on this ladder. I'm willing to stay in this journey. And they say, we're willing to help you. I love that so much. It makes me think of like the story you talk about, like how it's like, I mean, honestly, every time I fill up gas, I think of you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that, oh, 
I, it's, we're going to keep going on the journey. You fill up the tank. <laughs> I love that. I'm such a visual learner. It's that every time I fill up, you know, and go like sacrament meeting, you go, you fill up, you know, and then, then you have the strength to go. Like the car can move. And I love the analogy you made that it's going to sacrament meeting because in the prayers, right, it does say that you will, that water is sanctified, that bread is sanctified for our souls, made holy, a little more holier inside of it. I love, I just love that analogy that you said. It was so cute. And when you were talking about going on the ladder, um, she's kind of halfway there right now. And I, it made me think about your book. You guys, I want to show your book. This is one of the many books you've written, but this is one of my really favorite ones right now that I absolutely adore. It's, um, it's actually backwards for you guys, but it's the continuous atonement. This one is especially for teens. So if you have any teenage kids, um, teenagers, like I do, I love this book. Actually, I know you gave a copy to London, so he carried it on his mission with him, which has been such a strength to him. But I, um, I love your book. I love your wisdom and these such inspiring words. And there's a part in here that you talk about being halfway up the mountain. You talk about... Um, the word mediocre. Yeah, please, please tell us a little bit about that, you know, going halfway up the mountain and the idea after all we can do. I thought that this, the, the idea of Moses standing and saying, I'm nothing, and you actually explain what that means. Like, maybe you could share a little bit with us, but the, the analogy that uh, of the mountain and, and how every step matters was so no, I'm first i need to tell you that there was a comment on here yes. that said who painted that painting oh. and i want everybody to know you are the one that painted that painting um that's who painted that painting that we keep showing oh, oh it's god's god's work i'm just a little nobody but it's his work you know it's his well, work Oh, yeah, that halfway up the ladder is a lot like that analogy of the mountain because mediocre, the word mediocre comes from the Latin word mediocris, which means halfway up the mountain. So it doesn't mean that's as far as we can go. It means that's as far as God has helped us come. And if he has helped us come halfway, then he can help us go the rest of the way as we continue to trust in him and ask for his help. So the scripture in Second Nephi that says we are saved by grace after all we can do needs to be seen in the context of the scripture. Um, because in the context, then Nephi is saying there's nothing we can do. So we are saved by grace regardless of all we can do. We are saved by grace after all is said and done. The context lets us interpret that word a little differently because there's really nothing we can do except to reach out to him, except to welcome a covenant relationship into our lives. And then he is able to help us up that mountain. So don't think when you read the scripture in Second Nephi, don't think uh, my part, his part. Yes. Think my heart and his heart loving each other and being conformed to the same image. Emily Bell Freeman speaks about grace yes. and she says, he will meet us where we are. Yes, he will I brought her a little book. Yes. That she <laughs> grace, grace at the... At, Grace, what is it called? Grace at? Grace to become. Oh, grace. grace to become. Yes. It is, it is God meeting us where we are, just like the father of that prodigal son. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, that I'm, I love, you said in here, quoting Robert L. Millet, you said, we can rearrange a little bit the question into um, saying, after all, comma, what can we do? Yeah. We're just like... <laughs> I mean, it's honestly, I know a lot of people are asking about the name of the book. So it's called Continuance Atonement for Teens. The Continuance. Uh, what, can people get it on Amazon? I'm going to put a link yeah. in my stories. Yeah. And right. there's a, the, the original book that was written for adults is called The Continuous Atonement. Okay. And it means okay. that Christ's suffering is, he, 
he f his work is finished in that he completed the atonement but it doesn't mean he is finished in our lives he continuously will be a part of our lives and helping us use the gift of the atonement that he has given so he is the author and finisher of our faith and he authored our faith in the atonement he is finishing our faith through his grace so i i'm just asking a quick question you know when i am like in my everyday life if i just to call upon the enabling can i just say lord give me strength is that is that enough like, yeah yeah it, it, and and then like as you pray you're, you're praying to heavenly father in the name of jesus christ but we know that the grace comes from the entire godhead head yes this is the gift just from one of the three and so yes we can pray we can pray for grace we can pray for power we can pray for help and we can trust that in this covenant relationship that we have he is willing and anxious to help us um the reason that we have to see grace for its transformative nature is because if we just mix grace up with the word love or mercy or tender mercies or answers to prayer then we think we only see grace when we feel loved or we see a tender mercy or we receive an answer to prayer and it's important for us to know that grace is how god helps us become more like him because then we can see grace in our lives even when we don't see answers to prayer and even when we don't see tender mercies and even when we feel like god's love is far away we can still see grace because it's in those moments that we can see god stretching us teaching us helping us grow and and that's why it's important to not use grace as a term that just covers every interaction between god and man because we need to be able to see grace even in the hard times mm -hmm. even on lonely days mm -hmm. we feel like we have turned away from god oh my gosh that is so so beautiful i'm gonna share something kind of personal but i feel i should um i i think it's powerful how god can use us to bring his grace into somebody else's life and i know that he used you in our son London's life, when we first met you a few years ago, um, I, I still vividly remember London was at RSL. He was in a soccer academy and he was six months away from home. He's 16 years old. It was so hard. You know, he continually kept seeking God. There was during COVID. So there was so many restrictions. They wouldn't even let him go to church. And I remember and then at the end of those six months, um, like maybe around the fifth month, we decided for him to move out and live with a family that just was nearby the facility there that said, oh, we'll take care of him. We'll, he can live with us, no problem. And I was talking to him on the phone. I was like, mom, I'm sick. I'm not feeling good at all, like physically. And I, the spirit was like, book a ticket now. And it was like so crazy. And I did. I called my husband. I was like, we need to get a ticket right now. It was scheduled seven days ahead for us to be in Utah. He's like, no, 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 now. I've never done that before. I've never done that same day ticket. But we got on that flight. We got to London. We saw him. We were staying in a little Airbnb. So we brought him in with us that night. Sweet boy. He was exhausted. We, went, we all went to bed. But we just couldn't. It was so hard. Everything that he's gone through, holding on to his faith. In that moment, and then I got a call from a dear friend and she said, can you meet me this morning? There's a meeting downtown Salt Lake. Can you be there? Can you please bring London? My friend was in like, bring London. And I didn't know anything about the meeting. I didn't know what's going to happen. And it was just in such a difficult moment, like you're saying, and I'm praying, my husband, Adam, we're praying with our whole heart and soul. We have been all those six months for our boy and it was like, God, please, you know, and, and it was so hard. There were so many difficult moments. And 
I remember this period saying, get on that plane. And then I'm getting this text and we're, he's just finishing practice. He's a soccer player. So he's just in his like sweatpants and his jersey. You know, he just came totally not dressed like what other people were uh, dressed at the meeting. And of course we have Gary. Red Bull that sh shared his amazing story there about being a professional football player that was like meant to be for London to hear. And it was such a strength for him to see someone in the professional sports world honoring God, writing scriptures in his shoe. <laughs> I was like, what? That's just the best. But the thing that touched him the most was you coming to that boy that felt so out of place in his soccer gear and his sweatpants and you just put your hand around him and this is what you do so beautifully that you're like how are you doing what's your name i'm brad wilcox you're not like you didn't know <laughs> he's like you were just like the nicest i mean you treated him like your best friends and i just have to tell you the power um, of you reaching out of any of us anyone on here listening that we can all do to just reach out to someone. I know that was God's grace. I know that was God's grace. And and not only even ask him to come and speak with you. Yeah. Later on at Aspect it was, Road. It I, was beautiful. <laughs> he did such a good job. But you know, in the scriptures, uh, Ava, there's some phrases. One is grace to grace. And another phrase we read in the scriptures is grace for grace. And you're describing both of them. We grow, as Jesus did, from grace to grace. We keep growing. And then we return grace for grace. The grace that we've received as we have grown, we turn and try to offer that same help, that same enabling power to others. So if I turn for a moment to offer some help to your son who was away from his family. I just wanted to be there and be somebody he could turn to. That's just because I have had so many people do that for me. And I have felt God do that for me. And so it's just returning. It's not, it's not something I did. I'm just returning grace for grace. And London was growing grace to grace. And what's he doing now on his mission? He's returning grace for grace as he plays that role now of lifting and loving others in Denmark. Oh, Ava, I feel like we've talked for too long. Somebody's going to be bored to tears by now. No, are you kidding? We have so many comments. I can't even keep up. People are just saying, he touched my son. He touched my daughter. This yeah. He you, you touched their heart. He recently looked, someone saying you were at FSY, you were at the MTC, and people were just so touched by your heart and soul and words that you shared that you instantly, you know, made people uh, friends. This is amazing. I wish I could keep up with all of the wonderful um, comments, but it's true. We, it just makes me think how grand this plan of redemption is and what a powerful part we each play that how significant we each are in that part that one day we can be the one that slipped up but like you say you don't give up because you slip up and then we can get up and help someone else that is slipping i mean it's like this lifting and i love when you said growing um i think that's something really uh, amazing growing in the knowledge of god growing in in god's love um and, and sometimes it's not comfortable to grow. I know London was a soccer player, so he'd have growing pains. That was hard. He grew, he's six foot three. And it was just like, wait, what? Like how fast did you grow? And he's like, mom, I have growing pa pains. It was, it was not easy, but that didn't stop him from working. You know, some days he had to like, some weeks he was completely out of commission, but his heart spiritually was wanting, you know, it's like, I gotta maybe read books about how to, be a better soccer player you know, <laughs> let me keep using my mind but i love this idea of the um that you're talking about growing and um what are some ways that you would suggest that we can grow um that can help us like on a daily base life that you would say well this is like my go-to this is how i grow into that knowledge of god like that you would think in our fast 
extremely fast moving world uh, would be beneficial so that when we slip up, we don't feel so sorry about ourselves and, and um, that, that we're hopeless, right? But that we can pick ourselves up in those moments and, and get up, like that we can trust him. Like, what can we do um, like on a like everyday matter to help strengthen that? Um, to know how to react when it happens, when we fall down, when we, when we slip, you know, what do you think, what do you counsel youth? And, and in general, all of us, this is for everyone. We all slip up. We all need help. We all need God's help. But what do you think works um, that makes a lasting difference? I just think the very thing that people are doing right now as they listen to this, uh, taking time, taking time for the Lord, just, just taking time. If if our covenant is a relationship, how do we keep relationships strong? Well, we, we try to show we care with our words and our actions. And so as we can take time for the Lord, I mean, I appreciate everybody who's taken a moment, whether you're driving right now listening to this, whether you stopped mowing the lawn and are listening to this, whether you are listening to this and just took a break from the work that you're doing. I, I mean, I think all of us have to have a chance to pull away from the world now and then and just focus on what really matters. That's what FSY does. FSY gives kids a chance to step away from their routine and just focus for a few days on something that matters. And I think we all have to do that. Uh, because we all have to get back to the routine. Mm. I mean, I was up this morning uh, early so that I could get some work done so that I could take time to come and do this. Mm -hmm. And now I'll be leaving from here to go teach at BYU and I'll teach my classes till four. I mean, we all have a routine and we all have a life that we have to live. Yes. But when I was in the shower this morning, I recited that scripture that I recited for you because I didn't want to blow it when I talked to you in this live interview. And so why can't we just take a minute in the shower and say a prayer? Why can't we take a, a minute in the shower and memorize a scripture? Mm. Because as, as we try to, if we, if we say, oh, I'm going to take time and go do this, it's tricky. But if we say, I'm going to focus on God while I'm doing some other things. I mean, when I, I drove yesterday up to the Spanish FSY that they're having at U of U in Salt Lake, and I at the whole way I drove, I prayed. Now, I used to listen to music. I used to listen to podcasts, and sometimes I still do. I used to listen to scriptures, and sometimes I still do. But as my life gets busier and and I'm worrying about my kids and my grandkids, man, I could, I could just spend the whole time driving to Salt Lake just praying. And I'm sure that somebody is wondering why this man's mouth is moving while he's driving. But I, I pray. Now, did I have an hour in my day to pray? No, no. But I had to drive anyway. Yes. Well, I just prayed while I drove. I, I say the scriptures while I'm in the shower. And, and I just try to take moments when I can take time for the Lord. That's what President Nelson challenged us to do. Take time for the Lord. And I just try to find those moments when I can do that. And I think the very fact that people are listening to this, which I'm amazed that anybody would care to listen to anything that I have to say. But the fact that they're taking time to listen to us have a discussion, unscripted, unedited, just a friend to friend discussion about Christ and his influence in our lives. That right there tells me that those are listening. Those who are listening, they're doing exactly what needs to be done. And I'm so grateful for that. So no, don't beat yourself up because you haven't 
done this or that or the other. Just be grateful that you took time to listen to this. It's not a podcast. What are you? It's a what gathering. We I gather can... in the name of Christ. A life. In life and gathering. Ram life. Just be grateful that you took time to listen to this. I'm sure grateful that I took time to come and talk to my friend about these things because I'm leaving uplifted and I'm leaving reminded of what really matters in a world where we can get so sucked into watching the news and we can get so discouraged and we can get so sucked into social media and we can listen to the hate that's flying back and forth. And I, I just am so grateful that people tune that out long enough to listen to an old man and a very young woman talk about grace. Oh, you, we just, we all love you in here. Can I just say that? I've been looking at the comments and people are just like, so, so grateful to your teachings, Brad. We are so, everyone in here, honestly, I have to, um, I have to say that. And I love that you talked about time because we all have time. We may not have um, the same material possessions, we may not have the same jobs, we may not have the same families, we may not have whatever else the same, but we all have the same time. We all have like 12 hours in the day, right? And I remember in my mission, we had this video we would show people, it was like VHS tape, and it would spell, it would say, um, love is spelled T-I-M-E. I still remember to this day, and it's so true so just like our beloved prophet talked about making time for the lord and also that how you spend your time really matters yeah. how important that, that nanosecond is in in eternal perspective i was just like this is so good like you said turn to the lord turn to him and and make that time to um make him the priority in your life let him know right that, that's just so so beautiful that he helps us to climb up that ladder and i love i love the idea of um how every effort adds more light into our lives that it's every time we turn every time uh we pray in our car like you or listen to a good song in the car sometimes i'm just like going crazy in the car and i feel the spirit so much you know or like whatever you you do but in any situation walking your dog or um, I love how you said, make it part of our life. Because I think it's, we don't just go to church on Sunday. Okay, done. Check off. I'm done with God, right? But he wants to be part of our everyday life. That's the beauty of it. And I love, I love how you ended your talk, which I absolutely love this talk. I have to listen to it over and over again because it's so good. I, just the way I feel when I listen to it, I absolutely adore this. He, you said, this is so beautiful. Um, he gives us that help to become righteous. Okay, so he said, we are not just walking toward God and Christ, but we are walking with them. And that is like the most strengthening knowledge and in and, and our hearts that we can take that your words, that we are not alone, whatever we do at our jobs, and our lives with our families driving he can be with us like you said if we let him in oh that truth is so beautiful that he runs with arms and 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 hugs us and claps claps us and encircles us in his love oh thank you so much for taking the time today and thank you everyone for being here and i'm just so grateful to you Brad. thank you i i love you i love your family and those that are listening we love you too. Thank you so much for joining us. And, uh, and uh, I appreciate all the good you're doing, Ava. Thank you. Yes, thank you all. I love you. Yes, Emmanuel, God with us. I love that thought. Bye-bye. That's beautiful. Thank you. Have a beautiful day. Bye, Brad. We love you. Bye-bye.